Thanks guys for checking into our latest video on trunnion mounted ball valves. So the second most common ball valve on the market right now is definitely right here. This is called the trunnion mounted ball valve. The reason it's called the trunnion mounted ball valve is there is a support up here on the stem, which you can see right here, and down here on the bottom of the ball. So the reason that these are called trunnion mounted ball valves is they are supported top and bottom. And the word trunnion is very similar to the supports that you would see on the side of a cannon that would typically elevate or change the elevation of your cannon in order to shoot a, uh, you know, a big cannonball far away. So that, that's where the, uh, the overall name comes from. And overall, it's a very, very good valve. So these valves come in multiple different body configurations. Uh, they come in, this one is a three-piece body. They come in a two-piece body that has a top entry or a side entry. They come welded body. And I have seen some small trunnion mounted ball valves that do come in a threaded body. Uh, but overall, they all pretty much do uh, one thing, which is more or less getting this ball valve to turn 90 degrees in order to, to allow or prevent flow. So one of the defining characteristics of trunnion mounted ball valves is the seat carriers. Seat carriers and trunnion mounted ball valves come in two different styles. The first one is a single piston effect seat and the second one is a double piston effect seat. And these seats actually define what type of trunnion mounted ball valve it is. Whether that's a double block and bleed valve, a double isolation and bleed one valve, or a double isolation bleed two valve. So first, let's talk about seat carriers. When we look at our trunnion mounted ball valves, the seat carriers, as I said, are the defining characteristic. This right here is called a single piston effect seat. The reason it's called a single piston effect seat is this brown shaded area right here is essentially the single piston that your process pressure acts on. As your process pressure is acting on this valve, it's more or less pushing this seat carrier into the valve. Uh, so, and that, that's more or less how it creates a very nice and tight seal. There are also springs in order to assist you for low pressure sealing. So let's say you're under 80 or 100 PSI. Sometimes you'll see a whole bunch of little pocket coil springs that will fit into these little holes. Or sometimes you'll just get a wave spring that will go on top and will also assist with your low pressure spring. So you can really either have one or the other. I've never seen both, but it's typically one or the other pocket coil springs or a wave spring. With this single piston effect seat, uh, the advantage of it is they, your process pressure acts on this brown face, pushing the seat carrier into the ball. However, the one disadvantage of these seat carriers is they can, is they, they typically burp and that's due to the fact that they can be overcome by internal cavity pressure. So sometimes if you say close your valve and you have a bunch of liquid in it, uh, you can get liquid thermal expansion from say a condensate that wants to turn into a gas and that gaseous uh, process fluid will push on this face of your uh, seat carrier and it'll actually push it back and overcome the process pressure that's acting on this face. So when that happens, that's called burping and that essentially relieves the pressure uh, in the center cavity of the valve, more or less protecting your valve. The other one is called a double piston effect seat. The double piston effect seat, similar to the uh, single piston effect seat, has your process pressure that acts on this brown seat ring right here. However, it has another piston effect seat right here, which is in the color purple, and your internal cavity pressure will actually act on this one. The reason this is important is if you have liquids trapped inside the center cavity of your valve, they will act on this purple face and that, uh, and during something like liquid thermal expansion, that gaseous process fluid will actually act on this purple face and push the seat carrier harder into the ball in order to create a tighter seal. So with these double piston effect seat carriers, there are no burping, like no burping can, can happen so your liquid and your gas is trapped inside the center cavity of the valve. When that happens, it can be a little bit dangerous for these valves as you can overpressure the center cavity, 
cause a leak or you can actually, in some cases, cause your bolts to actually break and your three-piece or two-piece body will actually come apart and start leaking. That's typically very, very bad. So one of the ways that we protect against that is liquid thermal expansion kits uh, or liquid, liquid relief kits. They're called LRKs for short. Essentially, what these do is in a closed position uh, for this valve, you have your center cavity here that's in between your seat carrier on your upstream side and your seat carrier that's over there on your downstream side. When these, are, when these have double piston effect seats and they're isolating the valve and isolating the uh, center cavity from your process fluid, you can get pressure buildup from your liquid thermal expansion that's trapped within your ball as you stroke it. As that liquid thermal expansion increases, we have these, which is, liquid, which is your liquid relief kit. And this is a small pressure relief valve that uh, will relieve your internal center cavity pressure all the way into the safe side of your valve. Now that can be on the upside stream of your valve or the downside stream of your valve. It really depends on what you're trying to isolate. As I said before, trunnion mounted ball valves are defined by their seat carriers. And you can put different seat carriers within all of your valves. So if you have a single piston effect seat, which is this one, and this is the seat that burps because it moves. If you have a single piston effect seat, on both sides of your valve, that's called a double block and bleed valve. If you have two of these seat carriers, which are double piston effect seats, where you have process fluid that acts on this brown face and your internal cavity pressure fluid that acts on this purple face, these double piston effect seats on each side of the valve are called a double isolation in one valve. If you have a combination of the two, where you have this valve on one, or the single piston effect seat on one side and the double piston effect seat on the, the other side, this one is called a double block and bleed two valve. Or sometimes people call it a combination seat valve. Combination seat valves do, are, are a bit of an advantage over your double isolation and bleed one valve because your single piston effect seat burps. And because it burps, it eliminates the need for this liquid relief kit. Uh, because essentially that liquid relief kit is a bit of a cost adder and can drive up your prices. So if you know which way that these valves are going to be uh, put in and what the safe sides are and where, how they're going to be orientated, then these can be a very good cost effective and economical solution. So this concludes our tutorial on our trunnion mounted ball valves. There are lots of different configurations and lots of different materials that you can actually build these out of, and all of them are there in order to tailor these valves to your process fluid. If you guys ever have more questions on choosing the right valve for your application, please feel free to reach out to us and one of our Tundra valve specialists will contact you and help you out. Thanks a lot and have a great day.